Good morning. You're listening to Hampa Home Talk, and this is Leo Kane with Barrel Engineering and Inspection. Katrina is sailing the seven seas with Pat George, so uh, I will be filling in today for her, as I do from time to time. Eventually, she'll actually invite me to go on one of these cruises, but uh, until that time, I guess I'll have to just invite my close friends into the studio to talk for an hour. And what an exciting hour we have for you today. The topic of today is the 203K loan slash homestyle loan. And you're probably wondering, I don't know what that is, which is fine. That's why you're listening to this hour of Tampa Home Talk. We have a, a very powerful lineup for you today. We have Ty Swenson from Swenson Construction. We have Anthony Maselli from Barrel Engineering and Inspection. And returning is Adam Talley with Talley Insurance. Good morning, Leo. I know. It's exciting to have you in the studio as opposed to just a two-minute phone call. I like it a lot better. Well, yeah. I mean, it's just a more relaxing face-to-face time. We're here in the Beasley Studios over in beautiful St. Petersburg. Um, be- weather is beautiful. I just love this time of the year where the, where the weather starts to uh, to get cooler. How does that impact construction, Ty? Because I know you're a construction firm. Well, when it's not raining, we're building, so it's nice. Uh, don't really enjoy the... Uh, getting dark so early but uh, other than that everything's full full speed ahead with no rain hopefully in the near future well can you just start construction even earlier in the morning well yeah i mean it, it's still you know you're, you're still starting at seven no matter what because you don't want to wake the neighbors but other than that you know people usually cut out around three or four on a construction site anyway but i like to get home before it gets dark but lately it's I've been getting home after dark, so. Well, yeah, I, I know usually like after I walk my dogs around 5.30, I like to go on a bike ride. And when I start my bike ride at 6 o'clock, it's almost pitch black out there. It's just it's just insane. Um, How is that impacting you on inspections, Anthony? Are you getting caught with the uh, no light down? No, I mean, uh, not at all. I mean, we actually, uh, it's actually better being kind of more daylight in the, in the morning because now you, you get up, it's daylight versus being dark. So I kind of like the hour change. Hmm. And what's your, you have no opinion, do you, Adam? Yeah. I'm just tired. I don't know what time it is anymore. <laughs> uh, see, I've often debated having two houses where one house can be in this time zone and then one house could be like in Texas. So when the hour changes, I just move to another state. I, I thought about that. That way I don't have to adjust or just move to a state like Arizona that has no hour change whatsoever. I think the legislator pa- passed something last year. They just haven't enacted it yet to uh, get rid of the- well, it had to be it had to be approved by the Senate, and so we passed it here, but the Senate didn't pass it, so oh, we didn't okay. get a oh, we didn't, didn't get, get it? to do it. Nah, no. In the in the state of recounts, you think that uh, they mm-hmm. would uh, allow us to not mess with our time as well? Uh, from what I heard, it was more of the um, news outlets, TV stations, that kind of stuff, because they didn't want the news to be an hour off and all the shows and everything to be an hour off of what it would be for the rest of the East coast. You you know, you're blaming media and you know where we're standing right now. (laughs) This is the radio, you know, everybody's going to listen to it anyways. Well, yeah, we do have 35,000 strong listeners. And um, if you'd like to call in and uh, ask a question, our on air number is 808-888-404-1010. That's 888-404-1010 is our in studio number. I'm sure we'll might have a giveaway later. Uh, maybe a free insurance quote. We'll, we'll give one of those away later in the hour. If you'd like to see if you'd like to save some money on your homeowner's insurance, maybe we'll uh, give away a free. Oh, for I got one for you, Ty. Uh, if you redo a kitchen with Swenson Construction, we will give you one free handle on a cabinet. <laughs> we might throw in a microwave. Okay. <laughs> Good stuff, good stuff. But anyway, the reason why I wanted to pull us all together today as a power team is to talk about something called the 203K loan or the homestyle loan. And that basically is when you're buying a house and you want to renovate it. Because oftentimes I'll be I'll be looking at a property like with my wife, for instance, and she's like, oh, I love this house. I want new flooring. Or I need a new AC system. I've, ne- I've never met your wife, but I bet that's exactly how she sounds. She does with the arms flailing too. So when you're in a house and and you want to buy it, but you want to make these changes, the worst thing that can happen is having a mortgage where after I spend $250,000 on a house, I then have to have a second line of credit or a second payment to afford $30,000 to $50,000 in renovations. That's two payments in one month. Now, what the 203K product does is that allows you to have that as one payment. 
So you get your mortgage, your renovation in one payment, makes it easier for the buyer to buy the house. And it's, it's truly a great product because where it came about was they, they all these toxic assets from the 80s. You think I'm talking about early 2000s, but I'm talking about from the 80s. They wanted a way to bring these houses up to basically um, marketable value and have the houses sold and have these houses renovated. So that's where it came about. So when you have these downturns in the market, these products become more popular. And as you get these government programs that open up in the, in, in the beginning of the year, you get a lot of money in this arena for this product. Um, so yeah, so I know, Anthony, how many inspections did you do in the 203K arena earlier this year? Like between January and June? Um, for myself, probably maybe maybe 20 or so. Yeah. Yeah. So Ty, are you also seeing like a, a cyclical or a seasonal type type with this like during the certain times of the year? Yeah, it seems like we were busier, you know, right before school was getting out. Um, as people, you know, I, I think like to move during the summer and get situated before school starts. Um, we've had one or two lately, but we were a lot busier, you know, earlier in the year. Yeah, and January is right around the corner, so we'll see an uptick in that again, uh, which is why we, we I like talking about things that are timely. If you were talking about January and November, that's timely. If we're talking about January and February, we're all behind the curve. So that's why I want to talk about these things in advance. Speaking of talking about something in advance, I've got very exciting news for you. We have an open house tomorrow, 12 to 4 p.m., we being Katrina's team. At 27422 Sky Lake Circle in Wesley Chapel. At 27422 Sky Lake Circle in Wesley Chapel. This is a beautiful 3-2 house, 1,690 square feet, two-car garage, laminate and tile flooring. Open house tomorrow, 27422 Sky Lake Circle, Wesley Chapel. It's going for $235,000. I don't expect this house to last through the open house tomorrow. I fully expect the buyer to be calling Barrel Engineering and inspection of that house sometime next week to have it inspected. Will they have cookies? Uh, they usually have cookies. Sometimes they even have mimosas. Whoa, nice. These, these are fan- well, 12 to 4, cookies, yes, mimosas, not sure. <laughs> I do know we did one open house. We actually did a broadcast from an open house, and they had cookies. They had mimosas. They had champagne, which is the mimosa without the orange juice. They had everything. By the end of our one-hour broadcast, the whole real estate team was completely lit like these microphones. <laughs> nice. That was yeah. great times. So back to the 203K. Um, it's important because this allows you to buy a house that you wouldn't already want, already don't have the means to buy. Um, helps your deal close faster. Because I know going back to when Adam and I talked about the four-point, sometimes you go on the four-point form with the four-point inspection to qualify for insurance and there's a couple of deal killers in there. Like, what are some of the common deal killers you'll see? Ooh, um, electrical wiring is one of the biggest things that I've seen recently. A lot of double tap wiring, aluminum wiring, that type of stuff where the carrier puts their foot down. They don't want anything with that. So you either have to replace the entire box or find a new house. So, so something like this 203K program can step in and say, these repairs will be done and after the house closes and then the insurance companies, what are they, what's their take on that when they, they have written notice and a written contract saying that this is going to be taken care of? It depends on the carrier. So a lot of times uh, we have a lot of good relationships with all of our underwriters with most of the carriers. So if it's something where everything else on the house is looking great, it's just one or two things. They know it's going to be done within a certain amount of time period. They'll allow it on that contingency. Now, if we're talking about a lot of construction where you wouldn't be able to get insurance, a normal HO3, HO8 insurance, mm-hmm. is there a product out there that bridges the gap during the construction? Why, yes, there is. Uh, so there's a policy called a builder's risk policy. Um, and what it is is designed kind of like a homeowner's policy, but really what it does is it covers that structure plus the renovations and it allows for the you know construction, renovations, that kind of stuff to be going on. And obviously the home at that time is vacant or unoccupied. So it allows for all those extra issues. So what is that what does that coverage actually actually cover? What what are we covering? We're covering the house that gets damaged, we're covering the materials if it gets stolen. Uh yes, yeah, so it'll do um, it'll cover the house if it's damaged, materials if it's on site, so long as they've been installed, um, and uh, also some liability. 
Awesome. Well, we're coming into our first break. So at this time, I'd like to remind everyone that if you like what you hear and you want to get more information about Ty, about Anthony, or about Adam, you can reach us at our off-air number, which is 813-377-2775, 813-377-2775. And when we come back, we'll get a little bit more into the insurance, and then we'll start talking about how you do the 203K process. Again, this is Leo Kane with Barrel Engineering and Inspection. You're listening to Tampa Home Talk. Welcome back. This is Leo Kane with Barrel Engineering and Inspection, your host of Tampa Home Talk this morning. I just wanted to take this quick reminder to actually this moment to remind you about our open house tomorrow from 12 to 4 p.m. at 27422. Sky Lake Circle in Wesley Chapel. That's 27422 Sky Lake Circle in Wesley Chapel. This is a beautiful 3 2, 1,690 square foot house, two car garage, laminate and tile flooring, open house. Come out tomorrow. Say hello to the Katrina team. Um, if you'd like more information about this listing or any of Katrina's listings, you can guile us at 813 377 2775. That's 813 813- 377-2775. And I just want to take one more moment, if I may, gentlemen, talk about this brand new listing. It's It went active, I think, yesterday or even today, like an hour ago. We have one at 440 Meadow Lark Lane, Palm Harbor, Florida. That's 440 Meadow Lark Lane, Palm Harbor, Florida. This is a three-bedroom, two-bathroom, 1,679-square-foot home. It's private, private pool. It's got a fireplace. It's close to the beach. You can land this beauty for just $300,000. Make sure you give us a call at 813-377-2775 to find out more information about how you can actually come to the open house, how you can actually get in, be the first person to see Meadow Lark Lane, and be the first person to have your own private pool fireplace close to the beach. It's not too, well, there's not too many houses like that. To have all three of those, that sounds like a good combination. What do you think, Adam? I'd take it. You would take it? Well, if you take it, then why am I announcing it on the air? <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I'll let Katrina's staff do the, do the work on that. Well, you'll write the insurance policy. I would love to. Speaking of the timing of insurance policies, we're talking about builder's risk on a 203K or a home style right before the break. A builder's risk policy to cover the gap between normal insurance and construction. Is there what, what kind of timelines am I looking at a one month policy that renews every month? Do I get a six month? I mean, how, how do I line one of these up from a timing standpoint? So that's also going to depend on um, on the loan and the lender and everything like that. Um, you know, a lot of lenders, they want to see a 12 month policy. So we do have those options available. Uh, some people, the lenders not necessarily looking for that. So we can do anywhere from between a one month policy all the way up to a 15 month policy. So we have quite a few options available for them. So what happens when, at no fault to the contractor, they're running a little bit behind due to maybe a homeowner decision or, or a hurricane? What happens when one of these policy hits its lapsing period? We have to rewrite it. So you do a short-term policy. So you just get a new short-term policy? There's no extensions like month to month? No. Um, so with one of our carriers, they have options between you know one and six months and anything between four and six months, you can get a refund. So on, you know, up to half of the premium. So if they say it's only going to be a few months, I always encourage them, okay, well, let's get a four or five month policy. We can always cancel it and get some money back, but it's going to be a lot more expensive to keep going one month at a time. But if my contractor tells me it's going to be four months from start to finish, I mean, Ty, it's only going to be four months, right? Oh, absolutely. If you <laughs> Only if you work with Swenson Construction, though, those other contractors will drag it on much longer. Well, and again, at no fault to the contractor, some of these projects take longer than anticipated. What are actually some of the legitimate reasons other than the, because the homeowner thinks the contractor is just not around. But I mean, what, what are some of the legitimate reasons in your industry you've come across that contractors might not move as fast? Well, you always have weather as, as one of the big ones in Florida. Um, and then anytime you're doing a rehab, you have underlying conditions that you don't know about. Uh, you start peeling off drywall and there's wood, wood rot and sagging beams all that stuff needs to be addressed we we've got to get an engineer out to make sure something structurally doesn't need to be done and that takes time because i've got to make a drawing of it we've got to take that drawing down to the county have them approve it so i mean they're in the county right now is not 
as as fast as we'd like them to be. So, I mean, those are those are the the biggest things, you know, that lead to delays on our our behalf. Okay, but uh, speaking of having an engineer, I mean, the the joy of the 203K process is you basically have an engineer with you the whole step of the way. So, let's bring Anthony into the conversation. You're a certified master inspector with Barrel Engineering and Inspection. Right. You are a 203K consultant and you're a home inspector. Yes. And I understand you're getting your building code license in the near future as well. Looking for it. So, as a home inspector, what would be one of the differences? I'm, I'm, I'm a home purchaser. I don't know anything. I don't know the difference between an inspector and engineer. Why would I need a 203K consultant? And how is that different than a normal home inspection? Well, a 203K consultant is actually going to be estimating the damages, um, which is going to be their renovation process, versus a home inspector is non-invasive. So you're basically just going in and uh, pointing out defects for a qualified person to do the inspection. 203K, you're pretty much all that in one. You're inspecting the home, you're checking everything out, and you're documenting what the home is going to need to get it back to habitable conditions. So basically, if I was a home purchaser and I'm going down this 203K route, I shouldn't have a home inspection first and then bring a 203K consultant in? Well, I guess you could, but maybe kind of wasting. Yeah, I would say no. Uh, I, I would just because we do both. We, we, we have the process of doing the inspection as well as the whole 203K process. So um, what are some of the common things you see out there on some of these these homes? There might be a hoarder home. It might have been a foreclosure that's been been abandoned for for yeah, know, two or three some, years. What, what, are, what are some of the common defects you find? Um, I find a lot of the, the roof usually. HVAC is not working or it's there's a lot of mold moisture growing. A lot of rot uh, throughout the home, poor maintenance, no maintenance. Uh, some could be a pterodon and, and be surprised. But um, very few uh, get like a normal renovation. Uh, most of them are pretty much at the point where we're going in and just writing up everything that's that we pretty much paint everything from floors to, to roofs needs to be renovated to make it habitable. Okay, so so you're following the minimum property standards set by HUD or FHA. Yes. You're going through, you're making your list, you know, you're checking it twice. The home is going to definitely be naughty, but Ty's going <laughs> to turn make it, it nice. nice. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, all that. So you're you're in there, you're doing your inspection, you're finding these standard defects. Um, I, I hear there's two different types of this product. There's the 203K Limited or Streamline, as it used to be called, and there's the 203K Full. What what separates the two? Um. Well, it would be more of the cost. Uh, when you have its full, would be like I, I believe it's over thirty thousand, and then anything under that is limited. So, uh, from a lending standpoint, we don't have a lending lender here, but I know the difference on paperwork is quite drastic. From a contracting side, uh, do you see a difference between the limited and the in the full? Um, there's there's a little bit more paperwork, um, you know, but other than that, it's pretty much the same you know there's not a whole big difference our estimates our estimate just depending on where the price falls i guess now also with the 203k product the consultant basically prepares the bid document that you're bidding off of is that correct anthony that is correct so you give a copy of the of the estimate with numbers to the homeowner to the homeowner correct with pictures and then you produce a second set of documents yeah, for, the, for the for the contractor which is a little more um detailed but without prices Without prices? Yes. Oh, so we don't get to dictate the contractor prices? Correct. Okay. So you've done that. Um, now the contractor enters into the picture. That would be Ty. So you, you typically get this bid document, some pictures, access to the house. Um, I know the homeowners in these situations are under a time crunch to get the estimate. So what, what do you do that's different than your competition to get a timely estimate? Um, well, one of the things I hear a lot is I can't believe you answered the phone. So that's... <laughs> One, we're, we're doing right, something right there. Uh, two, we just try to jump right on them. We know there's a lot of timeliness to it, and we know we don't want to waste people's time. If, if we're going to be way out of budget, they need to find someone that can get in their budget, or they need to find a house that will fit in their budget. Yeah, and that brings up a great point. A lot of times, um, these homeowners, they watch shows on HGTV that have unrealistic prices, um, sometimes I was watching one, they were only talking about material price. They weren't even talking about labor price. So it made it look like this flip, this $70,000 flip was only going to be $50,000. 
And we're up against that. So what, what are some of the things that both Ty or Anthony, you do with the homeowners to set their expectations on what the price is going to be, especially in Florida with these volatile prices of construction? Um, well, I mean, it's kind of hard to like just throw prices at them. Uh, it's pretty much going to be estimating and then with like a contingency of 10% or 15, depending on the, the type of damage that I see. So it can be 50,000 plus another 10, 15, and then the process of everything else that comes with that. So what is this contingency you're talking about? Uh, that's hidden defects that we can't see through the estimating inspection period. Anything that's behind a wall, a Boeing wall, something HVAC is not working. We don't know what it's going to take. Might need duct work. So stuff basically, like that. basically, if there's a fifty thousand dollar estimate, you're adding another five thousand in reserves. Correct. Oh, that's nice. Um, does that come in helpful at the during the construction on your side? Uh, most times we have to use it, and most times we have to go over it because there, if there's five thousand dollars worth of damage, there's usually ten. That's true. Well, you're listening to Tampa Home Talk. I just want to remind you that our off-air number is 813-377-2775. That's 813-377-2775. You can get a hold of Ty Swenson from Swenson Construction to talk about uh, quoting a kitchen remodel. Get a hold of Anthony Maselli from Barrel Engineering and Inspection to talk about a home inspection or a 203K consultation. And you can get a hold of Adam Talley from Talley Insurance. We will be right back after the break. You are listening to Tampa Home Talk. Remember, love where you live, but let us fix it. We'll be right back. Good morning. Welcome back. This is Tampa Home Talk. I'm your host, Leo Kane, with Barrel Engineering and Inspection, filling in for Katrina while she is off sailing the high seas with Pat George and a lovely cruise that eventually I'll be invited on to. But until that time, I'm just going to keep plugging her listings and I'm going to blow up her open house tomorrow, make her wish she was there because there's going to be so many buyers at this open house. House is going to disappear and then all of her agents are going to steal all of these buyers and find them beautiful homes throughout the Bay Area after this one disappears. And that's because she's out of town. So 27422 Sky Lake Circle, Wesley Chapel, 33544 is the zip code. Again, open house tomorrow, 27422 Skylake Circle in Wesley Chapel. Now, we do have three other listings that I do want to briefly talk about. We also have in Tampa, if you want to drive as far as Wesley Chapel, we have 8801 Rustic Trail Court, Tampa, Florida. That is a five-bedroom, two-and-a-half bathroom, almost 3,000 square feet. It's on a cul-de-sac in a golf area and newly painted interior. So if you want to live near a golf course on a cul-de-sac, this means that you're isolated and you have your athletics right there. You can go biking, you can go golfing, you can do whatever else they do in a golf community. This is the house for you. Five bedrooms, two and a half bathrooms, almost 3,000 square feet. We've got another one for those that want to live east, like where Anthony lives in that area. We've got something in Riverview for you. We have got 12325 Prairie Valley Lane in Riverview. The houses just keep getting bigger and bigger. This one's six bedrooms, three bathrooms, over 3,000 square feet. It is a Walcott model. Whatever that means, I don't know. It's what's on the paper. But the Walcott model, that means it also has a three-car garage. It's built on a preserve, large front, side, and backyards, and you don't have a backyard neighbors because you're built on a preserve. So if you want to be isolated in a large mansion-like house, you're following the Walcott model, and you have three cars. This is the house for you. 12325 Prairie Valley Lane, Riverview. And the biggest the biggest bang for your buck, I have vacant land. Ooh. That can be any size house. 6848 Quail Hollow Boulevard in Wesley Chapel. We can sell you almost an acre worth of land. So like I said, these houses went from a 3-2 to a 5-2.5 to a 6-3. And on an acre of land... You can put a McMansion there. You can go 10 bedrooms, six bathrooms. You, you can do... It, the sky is the limit. Actually, the sky would be the limit on vacant land because you have to build up. <laughs> and if you'd like to find out any more information about this, about our open house tomorrow or about our listing that just hit the MLS at 440 Meadow Lark Lane in Palm Harbor, give us a call at 813-377-2775. That's 813-377-2775. Now, let's just jump right back into the 203K slash home style process. We've covered how to get insurance during construction. We've covered 
what happens before you close on the house, the, the bidding, the contracting, the inspections. Let's talk a little bit about after the loan closes. We enter the construction period. That's pretty much where um, Ty's company steps in, starts doing the construction. What makes the 203K process different on your end from, let's say, a normal construction? Um, you gotta, you gotta wait a little longer to get paid, um, is the, the one thing I think that scares a lot of contractors away. Um, a lot of contractors like to be paid as soon as they're done with the work, you know, you have to, there's steps, uh, after you complete the work, you have to call in Anthony to come do an inspection to verify it's been done. And then he lets the bank know, and then the bank will release the draw. So it's a little bit of a lengthy process. So there's more protection in there for the home buyer. Absolutely. So so you, you've done some work. Let's say you've completed the roof. You changed the HVAC. You've demoed some walls. You call Barrel Engineering and Inspection. Anthony or one of the team members comes out there, reviews the work done. So you can't you can't bill the client for stuff you haven't done. Correct. Um, and then he verifies that it's done correctly to the homeowner's satisfaction. Correct. And then he produces something called a draw document, um, which is basically a fee table. And you get paid out of that. Do they, do the bank, Further to protect the homeowner, hold anything back from that? Um, they, they hold back uh, 10%, and they also need lien releases from anybody that's filed an NTO on the on the job as well. So pretty much there's all these extra layers of protection in built into this that for the, for the home, home buyer that most contracts don't have? Correct. So that sounds like it's – so so if I'm get, gathering this correctly over the course of this hour, I've got a loan product – that I could use to buy a home and renovate it with one payment. I have built in extra layers of protection on the construction work. Um, this sounds almost too good to be true. I mean, it's definitely a great option for a homeowner that has no construction expertise whatsoever. I mean, it basically walks you through the process. Uh, it's basically construction lending for dummies because everyone's doing the work for you. That's awesome. So, Anthony, when you're going out there, and you do you meet with the homeowners during these draws, or are you basically just meeting with the contractors? Uh, most of the time, it's, it could be either the both, or it's not even, it could be like a house that's going to be, uh, it's um, on the construction, and it, it could be just me d doing the uh, Like a lockbox? Yeah, yeah, lock like, yeah, like a lockbox type of thing. And just going through the, the, the drawer to find out what has been completed. Okay, let's talk a little bit about some of the, uh, the the types of construction that Swenson Construction does inside and outside of the 203K product. I know for between our two firms, Barrel Engineering and Swenson Construction, we've done about eight this year. But uh, can you tell us some, something about the, the breadth of Swenson Construction and their ability to perform construction in general? Um, yeah, we basically we started uh, doing construction right before the market crash. So then that uh, led us into foreclosure maintenance. Um, and that started slowing down. We started doing REO rehabs for local realtors that were listing bank owned properties. Uh, and then, you know, we just organically turned into having full scale retail jobs where we work directly with homeowners. Um, and that now we do everything from a, a spec house all the way up, you know, a, a spec million dollar mansion all the way down to changing out a door for somebody. I mean, we we pretty much cover all your bases in, in one shop. I also understand you do commercial construction. Yeah, we're actually uh, my my brother and I are partners in a uh, commercial construction company. It's called Triton Construction Group, uh, specialize in uh, petroleum construction, uh, things like Wawa, Circle K, Seven Eleven, and also you know smaller retail. Like we've done a few Hardee's restaurants, some car washes, things like that. So how would commercial be different than residential? Is there a per is permitting more more intense? Is the usually permitting is handled uh, by people like you before we're even involved. Permitting's already been submitted. We're we're kind of coming in towards that tail end with a bid after all the changes and and whatnot have been done to the plans. They'll they'll send it out to bid to, you know, say four or five contractors. You know, give us two weeks to bid it. And that type thing. And, you know, then the permit's usually ready shortly thereafter. So basically with commercial, it's kind of a little more reliable. You can start faster. It's easier to sequence. Yeah. I mean, there's a, there's probably years of pre-planning in a lot of these commercial construction jobs. I know a lot of times zoning has to be changed and that can take, you know, crazy amounts of time 
I've had projects that have been delayed over a year just because of a zoning issue. Yeah, yeah, I've experienced that myself on some of our projects as well. So you do you do residential, you do commercial. Um, I know that we helped you guys on a I think it was a school slash church. That was a pretty large project with one of your with one of your project managers. So what are some of the more exciting projects you've worked on? Um, we did a really interesting project last year. It was a uh, pipe organ shelf at uh, the church I go to, St. Timothy's Catholic Church up in Lutz. Uh, it was about a hundred and fifty thousand dollar job. We had to install a, a steel shelf with concrete concrete poured on top of it to keep the vibration from really rocking the church. Um, they have a beautiful organ that is, and these pipes are like make your ears ring. They're so loud. So we had to really reinforce that thing. That was definitely one of the most interesting jobs we've ever done. Yeah, it's a little. That sounds a little bit more exciting than a kitchen bathroom reno. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> So what are, what are some of like it, when it comes to kitchen and bathroom renos, I, I've seen the gambit. I've seen something that looks like a five thousand dollar kitchen setup with cabinets and in an island and granite countertops, and I've seen the same footprint, but it's a twenty thousand dollar, and I've seen the same footprint at sixty thousand dollars. Why? What? What makes the five thousand dollar footprint a sixty thousand dollar kitchen? Custom made cabinets will always throw you way out of. Uh five thousand dollar range that's for sure you know we've we've done kitchens with sixty thousand dollars worth of cabinets for the same size kitchen that you could you know order the ones that come in a flat box for probably nine or ten thousand dollars so there's a big difference in custom made cabinets and ones that are shipped over bulk from china do you see uh something similar in flooring as well going from like a, a glue down laminate to some of these fancy tiles do you see oh absolutely i mean we and we we did a house uh a month or so back with marble flooring that was a interesting one venetian it, marble i don't know exactly where it was from but it was expensive i know that wow so how do you protect yourself i know through the 203k program i think they 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 make you break your bid down by labor and materials but if you haven't broken your bid down by labor and materials, how would you as a contractor protect yourself from crazy homeowner expectations on upgrades? We, we clearly communicate to our customers, you know, you have this amount to spend on flooring. We'll usually, you know, like say we're in a certain neighborhood where we've done a lot of work, let's say like Carrollwood Village, we know that most people are going to spend around $3 on their flooring selection. So we'll give them a $3 allowance. If they go above it, they're paying the difference plus 15% change order fee. If they go below, they get a, a credit at the end. So we try to give them a reasonable expectation. And, and you, you can also get the feel from a customer when they start pointing at things that they like. You know, you, you may need to move that that expectation up a little so they're not blown out of the water when, when they pick a $7 uh, square foot tile. So, yeah, it's all about, and I think Anthony touched on it earlier about setting the client expectations up front uh, to make all of our jobs easier and in the construction industry. Yeah, and basically just letting them know what they pretty much can and cannot afford um, because most of them have a cap on their rental um, as much as they can go. Plus, uh, it's tricky because the land value, house value has to all be as a factor as well. Well, yeah, the, the house, the, with this product, the home still has to appraise. It appraises. Correct for a value after the construction. So if you have a two bedroom, one bathroom house and you use this 203K or home style to turn it into a three bedroom, two bathroom house, you have to appraise according to the new value um, is from what I understand because none of us in here are appraisers. Correct. <laughs> yes, and none of us are lenders. So we're talking about the 203K product. This, this is Leo Kane with Barrel Engineering and Inspection. If you'd like to reach us or any of our guests from today's show, you can reach us at 813-377-2775. That's 813-377-2775. When we come back after the break, we're just going to get to know our guests a little bit better, get some random trivia questions to ask them. And uh, maybe I'll talk about the Walcott model again. Maybe I'll talk about my open house at 27422 Sky Lake Circle. But uh, you're listening to Tampa Home Talk. Remember, this is Leo Kane. Love where you live or let us fix it. We'll be right back after the break. Back, you're listening to Tampa Home Talk. I'm your host, Leo Kane, Barrel Engineering and Inspection. I'm here with Adam Talley from Talley Insurance, Anthony Maselli from Barrel Engineering and Inspection, and Ty Swenson from Swenson Construction. 
So we've talked a lot these past 50 minutes about the 203k slash homestyle loan, how you can use this loan to buy a house and fix it up with one mortgage payment. That's awesome. But I've got some questions that have nothing to do with the 203k loan that I'm very curious about. And since I've got Anthony on the spot, I've also very curious about this too, as well. So Ty, Anthony, you guys are on the road quite a bit. It's lunchtime. What do you do as a predominantly you're on the road, you're always traveling. What do you do eating wise to, to eat healthy? Uh, well, for me, I like to go to subways. I'll be honest. If I can find a subways around, I'm there. It's pretty healthy, pretty easy, pretty light, pretty quick. How about you, Ty? I, I usually plan my day around lunch, so I, I I'm the same way. Try to schedule appointments in general areas of places I like to eat. I like to. Uh, there's a couple restaurants I really like. I like to go to Hank's Barbecue on North Del Mabry. It's uh, just north of uh, Waters. It's fantastic. And then there's another place uh, kind of hidden. It's off of Bush and Himes next to a Beefo Brady's. It's called Hank's Pizza Kitchen. I like to go there and grab a piece of the buffalo. Uh, chicken um chicken bacon ranch pizza is the best i've ever had so I, I i try to get into those places at least once a week nice and adam you're you're mostly in a, in a desk environment so you don't have to worry about the on the road you can actually bring lunch from home i could i, I move around a lot though so I'm, I'm usually out out and about uh meeting with other clients and uh you know networking that kind of stuff but uh man if i want a burger i go to this little place in brandon called chicago's best burgers Ask for the atom. That's how often I go. Ask for the atom. Awesome, awesome. So that's not getting. That's not an insurance quote. You know, yes for a burger. They give you a quote of insurance. Uh, no. <laughs> awesome. So okay. So you guys are out and about. You travel a lot. Uh, let's find out what are some of your favorite areas to travel to in the Tampa Bay area. Let's start with Ty. I, I enjoy all the the neat and eclectic restaurants in Seminole Heights. Um, you know, I like to try different things. The You know, it's really interesting, some of the combinations of food they come up with down there. So I, I definitely like to hit the restaurants down there. How about you, Anthony? Uh, if I'm in Ybor, I like Ybor City. They got, they got good pizza there. You know, I'm Italian, so we got to have a good pizza. Yeah, there's hard some to, Hard to find in Florida. Well, they have their own Italian club in, in <laughs> Ybor, so I always hope they have some good Italian food in Ybor City. How about it's you, pretty. Adam? Where are some of the, if you're out and about and driving, you're like, ooh, I'm heading here. This is exciting. Oh, well, driving, I don't know, but uh, I just, I love where I live, so I like to walk everywhere. Riverwalk is awesome. I can walk to Ebor. Really excited for Sparkman's Wharf to open up here in a few weeks. So. Yeah, I heard that's opening November 30th. Yeah, I think yeah, so. Yeah, my wife won't stop talking about it. Do you know the difference between a wharf and a pier? I do not. So <laughs> I didn't until my wife and I went to Boston, and now I never hear the end of it. So the difference between a, a wharf and a pier is a pier is made out of wood, and a wharf is made out of concrete. It's good to know. That's the yeah. only difference. So in my world, as a structural engineer, I would say that the wharf would be more sound than the pier. Uh, Insurance-wise, I can agree with that. Yeah, so I get lower insurance. So that's a smart move by Channel Side. Build something that uh, gets you less, in, less money on an insurance policy, is more stable, will last longer. And it's a lot of people walking. And I know from recently traveling to San Francisco, there's a lot that happens on a wharf and a pier. You get all these restaurants. You get all these sea lions. You get all these tourists looking at the sea lions and the walruses. I mean, is there a chance for like a manatee viewing area at this channel side, I wonder? Maybe. That'd be uh, be an interesting idea. Why don't we uh, tell Jeff Finnick about it, see what he says. Well, I know that um, you Eulalie in that little waterworks park, they have a they have a manatee viewing area that's just filled with alligators. <laughs> well, that's so Florida. I, I would love to see like, I would love to have our own pier 42, 49, I forget. Do you know the pier number in San Francisco? I'd love to have our own pier... But instead of having walruses and sea lions, I would love for it to be manatees. And that is your tip of the week. <laughs> no, that's not supposed to be the tip of the week. But um, I'm excited about that. I'm excited about all the growth and development. I'm sure you've seen it, Ty. You've seen, uh, since you opened Swenson Construction, you must have seen a drastic change in the landscaping around here. I mean, it's crazy. I grew up in Tampa. And I mean, you take USF, for instance. When I went to school there, there was nobody living on campus. And now they have dorms. I mean, they have, they're getting ready to build a $40 million football indoor football facility, which Swenson construction would like, like to be considered for if you're listening, Lalo Prado, <laughs> um, you know, USF, just that whole area is, is blown up. And then now you're moving into areas that people would get shot in, you know, 20 years ago and, and you're building $400,000 houses. Tampa's just dramatically changed over the last 10 to 15 years. It's insane. 
Yeah, have you seen, uh, Anthony, when you're going out on home inspections, are there areas, hotbed areas where you're, you're traveling to quite a bit where there's you've seen a lot of growth from new construction? A lot of growth. Uh, Wesley Chapel area, my area, uh, Gibsonton area, all that is booming. No, that makes sense because I mean, our listings— are tearing out farmlands and they're just putting in all these new constructions. Yeah, look at our listings that we have. We have yeah. two in Wesley Chapel, one in Riverview, one in basically northeast Tampa. So, yeah, we got yeah. a lot a lot going on in those those fringes. But you do a lot of inspections, and you see a lot of, like, I wouldn't call them flips, but you would see people in an inner core selling and other buyers moving into those houses as well, right? Oh, yeah, definitely. Well, at this point, I would love to do our tip of the week. Usually there's a doorbell sound. And uh, with the doorbell, I wonder who's at the door. Oh, it's Adam Talley from Talley Insurance. Why, hello again, Leo. What do you have for us this week? Well, my tip of the week is uh, going to be... Uh for auto insurance, the best thing that you can do, obviously rates are going up. I don't see them going down anytime soon. Just drive out there and you'll see all the accidents. I think I passed three to, just to get here this morning. But the best thing you can do when you're shopping around is don't wait till the last minute. You actually get a discount for quoting into the future. So, you know, don't wait till the day before it's due. Give your insurance agent a week or two or give us a week or two and we can uh, show you the difference. Awesome. And if you'd like to get a hold of Adam or any of our guest contributors, Anthony or Ty, you can call our off-air number at 813-377-2775. That's 813-377-2775. This has been an exciting hour here on the Tampa Home Talk Show. We've learned a little bit about what you can do with a house that's kind of a fixer-upper or what you can do with that house that you just love and you still want to love it even more by making it and customizing it your own. As always, you get this, this great information here on the Tampa Home Talk Show. Um, every week, it's just a privilege for me to sit in with Katrina on the weeks that she is not here. It's even more of a privilege to fill in for her, say her patented good morning, which I'm starting to get better at every week. Um, we have an exciting lineup for the rest of November. We will even be doing a rebroadcast of one of our November shows on Black Friday. So again, this is Leo Kane with Barrel Engineering and Inspection. On behalf of Katrina Madewell and her team, we are Tampa Home Talk. And remember, love where you live or let us fix it. Have a great day. Goodbye.